Today we want to talk about a mobile power plant that purifies water. It does two things. It creates power and it purifies water at the same time. It uh, can really help out in disaster areas. Let me explain to you what this is uh, about. Uh, let me just tell you how it works, first of all. Uh, basically, it takes sunlight. Uh, it, it, the sunlight goes into this, this, uh, this plant, uh, which is depicted as a battery, uh, and out of it, um, as, as it's collecting, let's say, rainwater in a, in a place that's flooded uh, or, uh, you know, the, the, there's been a disaster and there's mud and it's dirty and it's all that kind of stuff, it, it changes that water into, uh, it changes that dirty water into pure water, into hydrogen and to oxygen. Of course, hydrogen and oxygen, oxygen uh, can be used for other things. Hydrogen is a known source of, of fuel. There are many people and, and places that power their cars or their homes or their businesses with hydrogen and oxygen can be used, particularly in a disaster area, but anywhere as a, uh, as a medical uh, uh, treatment. So this is kind of interesting that you can take dirty water, which exists in so many places, and turn it into clean water, power, and, and oxygen for medical uses. Let's talk more about this with, uh, with Mike Stritsky. He's uh, the chief technology officer of the company that creates this called The Essential Element, and Brad Carlson, uh, who is the chief operating officer of The Essential Element. Let's start with you, Brad. Let's talk about the water side of this thing. Where would you use this? Under what circumstances? Uh, the, it could be used under any circumstances. The unit is highly mobile, lightweight. It can uh, be airlifted. It could be towed in by a trailer. It could be pulled in by a truck. Uh, well, I'm sorry, when I say what circumstances, anywhere. I mean, I mean what, what would be the thing that you would think, hey, we need to use this? Is it a disaster? Oh, is disaster. It like a Go ahead. D disaster relief, um, um, flood relief, uh, any, anywhere you, where you need clean water, where there's a, any kind of a, a crisis situation. All right, tell me a little about uh, how it works. I gave a very rudimentary explanation, but basically what happens? You've got a place where, uh, where, do you need to, where, where does the water source need to be? How does it go through this unit, and, and what happens to it? Uh, one of the beauties of the unit is that it has a very robust filter. The filter can basically clean any type of raw water. Um, you know, it's, uh, filthy water is, uh, is, works just as well as clean river water or well water. The quality of the water is the other aspect that's uh, most important. We're getting uh, um, water qualities that are virus-free. Uh, you, you know, you're in a disaster situation. You have uh, water from floods that you have potential uh, uh, sewage waste in it, river water. The unit can filter that water and, and produce uh, uh, clean drinking water. Mike, let's talk about uh, what happens now so that you can purify the water. That's fantastic, but this is powered uh, by the sun, and you've got byproducts that can come out of this. It can actually be very, very helpful for a disaster area. Tell me about the hydrogen and the oxygen. Uh, basically, uh, I, I live in the nation's first solar hydrogen home. I started this out four years ago, and I'm living off the grid now. So basically what I did is I packaged the technology used in the hydrogen home and made a portable application that can be used anywhere in the world places that you can't get diesel fuel to or you're worried about pollution. The, the, system of, the system is essentially simple. We're basically converting sunlight into hydrogen by splitting water into its base elements, which are oxygen and hydrogen. Then we're running that back through a hydrogen fuel cell to create electricity, heat, and more water again. So it's water to hydrogen, hydrogen to water, power of the sun does the conversion. So we're essentially making our own fuel from water. Um, nothing gets consumed, nothing gets transported, and this whole unit is chemical free, so we don't need chlorine in order to, in order to clean the water, uh, and we don't need any, and there's no byproducts. So nothing gets delivered, nothing gets consumed, there's no wheels to well. Um, so this system is unique in that it makes its own fuel. Picture the hydrogen fuel cell vehicles needing a refueling station. We've basically built the refueling station on board and is powered by solar energy. So we can take the energy that's used from this and we can store it for weeks, months, years from now and uh, with absolutely no emissions whatsoever. Let's just talk about hydrogen for a second as a fuel. Uh, a lot of people don't know that hydrogen is a av readily available fuel and that it's safe to use. Uh, Mike, am I to understand that you use hydrogen fuel to power your house? Uh, that's correct. Uh, for the last four years, I've been storing hydrogen created from sunlight in regular old propane tanks running it through a hydrogen fuel cell and getting uh, electricity, heat, and water. I also converted all my appliances in the house to run on hydrogen as well. So my stove, my hot water heater, and my dryer my, are all run off of renewable hydrogen. 
Uh, so anything we can do with fossil fuel, we can do with hydrogen. Okay, so Bob, uh, Brad, what do we do with this? So if, if there's a disaster, somebody brings in this unit, uh, how do you harness uh, all of the stuff, or how do you harvest all of the stuff you're getting? The clean water one is obvious. It uses solar energy to clean the water. That alone should make it worthwhile. Is it easy to use the oxygen and the hydrogen that is put out by this unit f in a disaster area? Absolutely. The, uh, the unit uh, produces the hydrogen. The hydrogen is stored on an onboard tank. Um, if the onboard tank is filled, we have deployable Kevlar tanks for surplus hydrogen. Uh, the unit is constantly making hydrogen. The unit produces more power uh, than is required to run the water filtration unit at any one pe uh, period of time. So constantly during that entire time, it's making more hydrogen. How big are these things? How big are they? They're on a 16-foot trailer. Okay. So that's, they can be, as you said, they can be airlifted, they can be taken in. Have you, uh, have you been able to, to see them in action in, in a disaster area? We have not yet. Okay, and you're hoping that they can be. Have you, uh, how's the marketing of this going? I mean, are there people who say, hey, this is something we need to have available because it can really help us out? The marketing uh, reception has been overwhelming. The, the interesting part about the system is we're using components that have already been tried and true. The, the, uh, the solar panels, the electrolyzer, the um, uh, inverters, the filter technology has all been tested. It's, it's really putting, integrating a, a series of uh, tested components into this unit, and that's what makes it uh, uh, seriously significant and also one of a kind. Brad Carlson, great to talk to you. Mike Stritsky, thanks very much for being with us to explain this. We love it. It's a big idea that could change the way we do things in the future.